Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the previous video we took a look at the Radeon R9 Fury, a high-end graphics card from 2015. We saw that this once $500 or £400 plus part could still handle itself when it came to playing new games with respectable settings and frame rates. At the end of that video I mentioned that an Nvidia GTX 1650 Super might be a better choice because it should offer similar performance. So that's what I want to find out. Can a new, well, new-ish $159 or £149 entry-level graphics card keep up with or even outperform a top-of-the-range part from nearly five years ago? Spec-wise, the Fury is clocked at 1050MHz, features 3584 shader cores and 4 gigs of HBM memory, clocked at 500 megahertz. It requires two 8-pin connectors and has a 275 watt TDP. The 1650 Super, what is I feel the best entry level graphics card out there at the moment, has 1280 shaders, a 1530 megahertz clock speed, a memory clock of 1500 megahertz and 4 gigs of GDDR6. It requires one 8-pin connector and has a TDP of 100 watts. It's also far easier to find and usually a little cheaper. That's for a new one too. So, it's gaming time. First up, it's Forza Horizon 4. At 1080p, the R9 Fury fell 11 frames short of the 1650 Super, though both results were very respectable. The 1650 Super, or 1650S as I shall now call it, also exhibited better percentile figures, though again the R9 was still doing a great job. Both cards also shared very similar temperatures, though my single fan 1650S was a little louder if I'm being honest. At 1440p the average frame rate was even closer, though the 1650S pulled ahead yet again with better percentile figures once more. For these tests, I ran the in-game benchmark, which consisted of a single computer-generated race. I did run this a few times, just to double-check. Both cards are, however, capable of handling Forza problem-free. Next up, it's Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is where the Radeon R9 pulled ahead. Both results were good enough to play the game just fine, though the R9 made far lighter work of this AAA blockbuster at 1920x1080. The R9 was a solid 10 frames ahead on average as we ran the benchmark test and then played through the first level. Switching to 1440p and again the R9 came out on top with roughly the same margin as beforehand. I have retested the game since yesterday multiple times using slightly different settings and to be honest I thought the gap might be closer between the cards but clearly not. So it's PUBG now, and I tested this across different maps with each card at both resolutions. The average at 1080p was higher, with the 1650S only slightly though, but the R9 was certainly more stable. Look at the difference in the 0.1% and 1% lows. Don't worry, the footage you're seeing may be varied map-wise, but all the benchmarks were carried out under the same conditions. Either card is a good choice at 1080p and 1440p was even closer average-wise because it was the same. Again though, the Fury was more consistent as far as the other figures were concerned, but again, there were no major problems with either the R9 Fury or the 1650 Super when running Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Okay, so The Outer Worlds is up next. This is a game that generally favours Nvidia cards, so I wanted to see what we could expect and whether this meant that there would be a larger gap between the two or four results. At 1080p the game certainly favoured the 1650S with a huge jump in performance, not just as far as the average is concerned but as far as the stutter or lack thereof is concerned too. We saw far less drops with the 1650S but as I said the Outer Worlds does generally favour Nvidia's GPUs. Having said that, the gap was closed a little at 1440p with the average becoming even tighter. Those 1 and 0.1% lows did still tell a story and that story ends with the Nvidia card once again coming out on top. But here's the thing, both cards are great and it goes to show you that if you bought a Radeon R9 Fury in 2015, then your investment was a good one as not only can it still keep up or do better, depending on the game, but you could probably get more for it if you were to sell it on the used market than you would for a 1650 Super. And that's definitely a factor worth keeping in mind as well, as they can be harder to find and therefore higher in price. Were these the most scientifically accurate tests in the world? Of course not, but I hope you found them interesting nonetheless. Furthermore, if 
one of your games prefers a certain company over the other, perhaps it's optimised for AMD rather than NVIDIA or vice versa, then you may see significantly different results there as well. But I think in a lot of cases, we don't really need to carry out too many tests because you are going to see very close results in a lot of titles. The 1650S certainly does sound like the more sensible buy though. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. If you didn't enjoy this video, leave a dislike on it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.